All sectors green, including energy. Let's get to Bob Bassani. Hey, Bob. Good morning, Carl. Uh, happy Tuesday, everybody. This is a very frustrating situation for traders. You know, the, this, the whole theme of the reopening uh, is certainly the main theme that's pushing the markets forward. Uh, but it's really difficult because a lot of stocks are overbought and it's difficult to break out right now because we've had such a huge run up. So you get this internal churning that's been going on. You see this here today. Jim is right to point out the big debate is do we bring back the lockdown trade? Well, it's a good idea, but it's really risky because it looked like it was working yesterday, but it's not working today. So you hear today five to one advancing to declining stocks. Look at the sectors here. Tech's up and so is the reopening. The banks are up. Energy's up. Industrial is up. There's your reopening story. So it's risky to try to put the lockdown trade on it because traders kind of get burned on it if they try to do it on a day-to-day -day basis. If you look at what's moving the markets, there's very good reasons to be concerned here because there's some bad news out there. We've got significant lockdown jitters. Those comments from the governor of New York yesterday really kind of like spooked people in the middle of the day. We still don't have a stimulus. I don't care what anybody's talking about. And we have really high valuations that we keep talking about. The good news is it's hard for the markets to drop in a big way because the vaccine hopes have sort of limited the downside. It's like a Fed put. There is one there that you feel about. There is a vaccine put there that's in the market. So how do you play this? Well, OK, if you look at the reopening stock, you look at the standard reopening names, your, your energy stocks like your, your Chevron, your Simon Property Group, the, the banks, the, the airlines, uh, the hotels. All these had nice rallies a month or two ago. But if you look at it recently in the last week or two, they're kind of flattish. They haven't really rallied much. It's hard to keep doing that because they've had such big moves up. And we're not sure about, you know, how soon the big reopening story is actually going to happen. So a little bit of uncertainty there sideways is what I would call this recently. And if you look at the work from home stuff, actually, the work from home stuff has held up pretty well, surprisingly well. If you X out some of the food things here, you know, your standard stories, Activision, Electronic Arts, Netflix, Zynga, the, 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 the electronic end, the tech end of work from home, as opposed to the consumer staple end of work from home, has actually done fairly well. So there is some signs of a crack in the reopening trade, but I wouldn't say there's a lot of signs about that. You need some momentum on the downside before you really talk about the lockdown trade gathering momentum momentum, and I just haven't seen it yet. So the other thing I would point out is there's a Fed meeting tomorrow, and traders all morning yesterday kept messaging me, Bob, Fed drift is going to kick in, and sure enough, here it is. The Fed drift is a very well-studied phenomenon since 1994. 80% of the equity premium of U.S. stocks have been earned in the 24 hours preceding the FOMC announcements, and of course, there are eight of them on the year. That is not a typo. 80% of the equity premium has been gained during the 24 hours before the FOMC meeting. This is a very well-studied phenomenon, Carl. It is not one of these, you're imagining things. I see duckies and horsies in the sky. The Federal Reserve itself has acknowledged that this phenomenon is very real, and it's allowed papers to be published on it on its own website on the New York Federal Reserve. You can see a tweet I did on the morning uh, this morning if you want to see a link to that. So maybe the Fed drift here is a little bit a part of this vaccine optimism uh, that we're seeing today. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.